All right, taking us back to the carefree childhood days of walking foods, candies. Great stuff, isn't yeah. it? Started with a family driven by an American dream. Yeah, 100 years later, it's a household name, and the sweets are still made right here in Baltimore. ABC 2 News' Cassie Carlisle shows us how the fifth generation is now still spreading joy. Pick one off here as it transfers off the belt. At Wonka and Foos Candies, taste testing is part of the daily workflow. Oh my God. And feeling like the proverbial kid in the candy store comes naturally. Especially when the kid owns the candy store. If you get up in the morning and you don't love what you're doing, quit. I get up in the morning I love to do this. Surrounded with the smells of raspberry creams draped with chocolate, hearing the crunch of almond toffee falling into the tub coated in crumbles, each process perfected over decades. People just look at you differently when you say the company's 100 years old. They go, wow. Fifth generation, you know. Paul Walkenfoos knows it started with his grandfather, Herman Charles Walkenfoos, who came to the States with his father, a Bible salesman, to see what the new world had to offer. There were a lot of candy companies in Baltimore. A port and sugar refinery, ingredients baking a booming candy industry. Most of the immigrants migrated to jobs where someone spoke the language that they spoke. Born in West Prussia, Herman Charles started working at a candy company where employees spoke German. Starting at 14, he made candy at other businesses, continuing for 20 years. And then he got married and his wife says, you know all this, why don't you just open your own candy business? In 1915, he opened the doors of Walkenfoos Candy Company. The business flowed like the tide, from locations across Baltimore to the counties, wherever people wanted to buy. And his son, Herman Lee Walkenfuss, took over. They did some creams. They did a lot of nut clusters. Uh, I don't know. Did a lot of hard candy. It wasn't, it wasn't even much chocolate. That came after World War II. And Paul remembers loving everything about chocolate. We lived in a row house. My father made the candy in the basement. So yeah, even age four, I'd sit on the cellar steps and, and watch him before I went to school in the morning. His father built a store in the front yard. Two of the buildings weren't connected. The ones that were connected were only connected on the first and second floor, and it was, uh, it was a nightmare. After serving as a Maryland state trooper and getting a degree in accounting, Paul was stuck on candy, coming back to Walkenfoos. He moved them out of the wonky house to Harford Road. So I wanted to get us into a new facility that was laid out much better for my daughters. He's bet everything on the family business, even taking out a loan on his own home to keep it afloat during the recession. If, if I lost all this in my home, uh, and then three of my daughters are working here, uh, luckily they all have spouses that, that have good jobs also, but uh, yeah. Words like devastating wouldn't suffice. Thankfully for him, the past two years have been good to walk and foos. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You'll see lines around the block leading up to Christmas and Valentine's Day. Paul's constantly working to ensure a comfortable future for his family and treats for generations to come. All made right here in Maryland. In Northeast Baltimore, Cassie Carlisle, ABC2 News.